FAMOC, we're obsessed about security, but we're also obsessed with humans. And right now, I would like to talk to you about both. My name is Bartosz Lwoszewski. I'm the co-founder and CEO at FAMOC. As you all know, the last couple of weeks, couple of months have been pretty rough. They've been, of course, pretty rough on individuals, but at the same time, uh, they have been rough for a number of companies and uh, larger organizations. The conditions in which those organizations have to operate right now have changed dramatically. So a number of organizations, including uh, such large companies as Google, Uber, Slack, Microsoft and others, had to uh, redesign how their uh, employees work. So namely, they had to allow their employees to work from home. And uh, Gartner survey reveals that uh, almost 82% uh, of companies uh, allowed their employees to, to, to work remotely. Many of the companies uh, have also switched to be uh, remote first. So to treat uh, working remotely as something uh, normal and usual. Uh, some of the companies have not also allowed their employees to return uh, to the physical offices until the end of uh, June next year. So what does that mean for, for the IT departments? What does it mean for the security of data? So on one hand, uh, for uh, the management boards, for the owners of the companies, less uh, employees at the, at the office means uh, less office space required, which of course translates into uh, reductions if, uh, in costs of, uh, of office lease. But uh, is it only a reduction of cost? Not exactly, because reducing the costs spent on, on the office space well, it increases uh, costs in other, other areas. So what has changed other than the location from which we work? Um, a number of things have changed actually. So we spent our days working in a way um, that is different on many levels than what we used to do at the office. So first of all, we all work probably a little bit more than at the office. We spend a lot less time or no time commuting to the office. Uh, we spend a lot more hours productively. Uh, we get less uh, breaks more, most probably because we don't have anyone to drink coffee with or to uh, go out and get some fresh air with. We also uh, use our mobile devices uh, a lot more and uh, we have some data to, uh, to prove that. Uh, since uh, lockdowns began in each country, the spike in uh, usage of mobile devices have been significant. Now, of course, uh, usage of uh, remote uh, meeting applications have also uh, been very um, dramatic. We've all heard stories about uh, Zoom being installed by everyone everywhere and by any uh, organization, any company using Zoom and uh, the success they've, uh, they've had. But it's been the same for, uh, for Zoom's uh, competitors as well. Now, I have uh, also, of course, uh, worked from home and I do work from home from time to time right now. Um, this is actually a picture of my uh, of the office that my kids allow me to use for two or three hours every day. It's their tree house. Uh, so I actually, uh, instead of having one office for myself, so going to our actual headquarters, I have two locations from which I work. So the first one is, uh, is the tree house you can see right here. And the second one is my home office, which basically uh, is my bedroom. Uh, but uh, I have those two locations. So for many, many uh, organizations, the reality has changed uh, in a way that instead of having a single location, a single office, they have right now hundreds or thousands of remote offices. And why this is important for, uh, for the IT departments? So this is important because, first of all, one location is a lot easier to maintain. So you can easily 
uh, have standards on what cables are used, what Wi-Fi technology is used, what security uh, controls are installed, are in place at, at the office. At the office, you have uh, access control. You need your uh, access card to enter. You need to have access card to open the doors. Uh, at home, people actually use way, way uh, different uh, measures. So first of all, everyone has a different type uh, of Wi-Fi at home. Today, usually they use a password. Uh, but uh, the password does not need to be as complex as the IT security department would like it to be. Um, at the office, you usually have your own computer and no one else uses it. At home, the situation is totally different. Uh, so whether it's your laptop, whether it's your uh, desktop or whether it's your tablet or phone for that matter, uh, it's not only used by you. It's very often also used by your kids uh, to play games, uh, to watch YouTube, or, or by your spouse uh, if, uh, if they need to check something on the internet. So we have uh, at least a couple of different users and not all of them are as uh, knowledgeable, as aware of the threats out there as you might be as an employee. Users are one thing. Uh, the other thing is your network. So. I mentioned that uh, at home, most people do have a, a, a password on their network, but how many people remember to upgrade the firmware of their routers uh, periodically? Probably not many. Um, at home, you have a lot of IoT devices. Even if you don't realize that uh, too much, you probably have uh, some smart speakers like an Alexa or a Google, Google Home. You might have uh, a smart baby monitor that connects to, to the internet for ease of use, of course. And all of those devices can run a pretty outdated uh, version of their operating system, which includes a lot of bugs. And uh, if, you're, uh, if on the same network you're using your uh, work laptop, they create a very hostile uh, environment. Uh, so uh, endangering not only uh, your corporate information, but also, also at the same time your private information. So uh, what can be done about that? Uh, VPN, so uh, protecting the connection from your work or from the device you work on. It doesn't need to be your work laptop. It can be your, uh, your private device, your private laptop, your private phone or your private uh, tablet. It needs to connect securely uh, to, uh, to your corporate infrastructure. Uh, before actually you set up a VPN connection, you need to make sure uh, the, the device itself and the environment on the device. And by environment, I mean settings, uh, policies on the device, but also applications on the device are, uh, are secure, uh, that the environment is safe for you to work. So once the, it is determined that the environment is safe, then is the time for, to configure the VPN connection uh, or a micro VPN, VPN connection for specific apps only. and connect securely uh, to, your, uh, to your office to make sure that uh, all of those uh, devices on your uh, home network are not able to interfere, are not able to pose a threat uh, to, to the organization's uh, infrastructure and data. Today we are facing a more difficult situation though. Uh, it's not just your typical uh, home network uh, that poses a threat. Uh, it's also the pandemics uh, that has uh, enabled a, a lot more cyber attacks, a lot more cyber threats to pop out. And they are uh, coming out and popping out on a daily and even hourly basis. So a lot of the new, a lot of new attacks like uh, emails, uh, phishing emails, they base on our fear of COVID-19. So a good example of such a threat uh, is an email uh, that an attacker might uh, send to you uh, saying that uh, a colleague of yours, uh, a friend from work, was diagnosed uh, positive to, to have COVID-19. And uh, the email uh, at, um, encourages you to open, to open an attachment and the attachment will actually tell you how to stay safe. 
And uh, as you might expect, uh, the attachment is not just uh, a description on how to say safe, but also cont contains malicious code that will actually uh, infect your computer or will infect your mobile device. So uh, we need to be doubly uh, aware, doubly conscious uh, of the threats today. And uh, we need to find a cure. We need to make sure uh, that in today's times, uh, our, our intellectual property, uh, company data, a customer, a customer's data is, uh, is protected and is safe. So uh, how do we do that? At FAMOC, we've been doing just that for the last 14 years. So we've been helping companies uh, to make sure that the data they store on their uh, employees' mobile devices uh, is safe, is protected, and uh, those companies' secrets, uh, customer information do not leak out. Uh, how can we help with uh, with the situation with, with working from home and uh, with all the new challenges uh, that we can see uh, out there in the market? So, first of all, we need to, um, as customers, as companies, we need to understand uh, the, that the situation is not going to change overnight. Right now, we need to get used to people working from home. Uh, we just need to allow them to have the, the tools and the means to work efficiently and securely. So the people are going to use those devices for private purposes. Uh, they are at home, they feel safe. Uh, they very often use their private devices right now. Uh, a lot of the companies that we talk to have uh, seen challenges uh, purchasing uh, mobile devices, laptops for their employees as the uh, as uh, lockdowns were introduced uh, because uh, the demand was so high. So a lot of the companies, they used desktop computers in the past. Uh, they never actually thought that all of their employees uh, would need uh, laptops or mobile devices. And the situation has changed overnight uh, for uh, a lot of those companies. So even if it's a company uh, issued laptop or a company issued phone, it will definitely be used for private purposes as well. So it makes sense and uh, it's actually something we recommend to uh, all of our customers to allow private use of the mobile device, uh, to allow private use of the smartphone, of the tablet, uh, and to allow a lot more freedom, a lot more privacy uh, to the user when they are using the device for their uh, private purposes. Now, when it comes to using the device for corporate reasons, for, for work, and there cannot be any compromises. So we suggest uh, and we, um, we allow using our solution to divide the device into two uh, separate um, modes, the work mode or the work container and the, the private part of the phone. So we can make sure uh, that anything that lies in the, uh, uh, in the work part of your mobile device is uh, encrypted, is protected, and uh, the applications uh, that are installed inside this private part of the device are uh, approved by the administrator and pose no threat uh, to, uh, to the organization. And it's also possible uh, to configure the device in a way that only the corporate part of the phone or the corporate part of the tablet is able to access your corporate network. Uh, if you uh, finish your work and get out of the and get out of the work profile on the phone or on the tablet, uh, you're no longer connected to the company. So you can use, you can use your YouTube, you can uh, install apps, you can play games, uh, but those uh, applications will not be connecting to your, uh, to your corporate backend. We have a portfolio of uh, three products. Famoc Manage, which is a unified endpoint management platform. Famoc Lock, which allows uh, financial companies and mobile operators uh, to more easily collect uh, their monthly payments for mobile devices and FAMOC Defend, which is a, a government defense grade product for data protection and encryption for mobile devices. 
I would like to uh, just highlight some of the features of our FAMOC Manage platform. And um, other than the uh, advantages, the main points I mentioned, uh, especially in the light of uh, work from home times or and, and the pandemic, uh, FAMOC Manage allows the IT department, the security department to control the full life cycle of a mobile device in an organization. So beginning with the device enrollment, so once the device is purchased, we allow uh, the administrators or the end users actually to easily enroll uh, the mobile devices, either by scanning a QR code or using bulk enrollment methods, which basically uh, don't require any administrator intervention. The user just takes the device out of the box and it's uh, managed. Um, configuration. Uh, we allow the administrators to configure a number of different parameters to pre-configure the devices, to configure all of the settings that will make the life of their employees easier, to pre-install applications uh, for their mobile, uh, for their uh, employees, and uh, to make sure all the settings such as Wi-Fi, for example, or VPN are properly, properly configured so the device is, uh, is ready to be used. Security is definitely one of the key points uh, of our solution. So we allow the security departments to define very granular uh, security policies for the mobile devices. Monitoring and management. So once the devices are deployed, are out there in the field and are used by the uh, by the users, it's important to, uh, to constantly monitor uh, the status of those devices, the status of configurations, uh, applications, and the uh, level of security of those devices. So FAMOC Manage has a number of tools that allow the administrator to do just that. So some of them are a customizable dashboard, which uh, allows to, to quickly see the status of uh, the most important aspects of the mobile fleet. Uh, the admins can get um, automated uh, reports that will would be sent to their uh, email inbox. And there's, there are also alerts uh, that can alert the administrator of uh, different things happening either on the device or to the management system itself. Uh, then last but definitely not least, there are support tools uh, whenever the end users encounter problems. So first of all, a lot of the issues can be fixed automatically, either by reprovisioning the device or sending out a, uh, a proper configuration. Uh, but sometimes a more uh, individual uh, support is, is required. So for those type of situations, we offer a remote access type of, uh, uh, type of tool, which allows the remote uh, administrator to access the phone's uh, screen, keyboard, and uh, touch screen uh, remotely, of course, with the approval and uh, full knowledge of the of the end user. So a lot of the issues can be uh, can be troubleshooted and fixed in this way. Cybersecurity is not about a single tool. Uh, it's not about a set of tools either, and it's not just about education and awareness. It's actually about uh, all of those things combined. And because of that, we have actually joined forces with 40 other Polish companies and uh, to start an initiative called Cyber Made in Poland. I really, really encourage you to uh, check out our website at uh, cybermadeinpoland.pl and have a look at uh, what we are doing together. At the same time, I also encourage you to stay in touch with uh, FAMOC, to stay in touch with me. So feel free uh, to drop me an email, to give me a call or to uh, connect and chat on LinkedIn. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the expo. Thank you.